Hey, what's going on everyone? Matt Antonelli here and today we're talking infield play, specifically two hand plays versus one hand plays. I was talking a few days ago with Juan Rivera, former and still current Antonelli baseball coach, also coaches with the Boston Red Sox in the minor leagues. And he was discussing their infielders and how they make one handed plays versus two handed plays. And it got me thinking about drills that you can do and ways that you can improve your one handed play because I think that a lot of players, especially youth players, it is harped on all the time to them to use two hands, use two hands, use two hands. Whether you're an infielder or an outfielder, it doesn't really matter. You've probably heard that phrase a thousand times if you play baseball or softball. And I want to explain quickly when you will use two hands and then when you will use one hand and when you should use one hand because you need to be skilled with just your glove hand. And I've had a lot of talks with really, really high level college coaches that say one of the issues with infielders when they go from high school to college is that they're really good with two hands but they can't use one hand because they've never really been taught how to use it. And a lot of coaches, as I said earlier, are always harping on using two hands. So as an infielder, you need to be able to use both. Two hands, yes, but one hand also. So here's the general rule I'll give you. You're gonna use two hands on any ball that is in the framework of your body. So basically between your shoulders, you're gonna use two hands as a deflection. So the ball's gonna come in, it's gonna hit above the fingers. This hand right here is basically gonna trap the ball. Two hands, ball comes out and you throw. Now you're gonna use one hand on any ball that gets outside the framework of your body. So once it passes either shoulder, you're gonna use one hand and you're gonna bring the ball to the middle, transfer and throw. So one hand for forehands, one hand for backhands. Now, you're also gonna use one hand sometimes. There, are an ex there is an exception to the rule. If you have to step up on a ball, right? So you might be attacking a ball and then you realize at the last second that you have to get that short hop. You have to create a short hop. And so if you're gonna get that in between hop, you may need to step up and use one hand to field the ball. Now that's technically still within the framework of our body, but because we need to shorten the distance between the ball and the glove, we wanna go get that with one hand. There's also gonna be some plays that are hit at us, but we might need to drop steps. You might need a drop step forehand side or drop step backhand side. And those balls technically, even though they're hit at us, once we drop step, we use one hand. We drop step, we use one hand. So you've got to be comfortable, bottom line, using one hand. So we're going to use the Rucket Rebounder today so you can get more practice on your one hand and not just wait until an actual practice, but be able to do it on your own. So let me give you a quick series here, a one hand series that you can use to improve your one hand play, forehands, backhands, and balls that you have to step up on. So the first drill is really simple. You're going to have your glove. You can also do it with no glove, so I'll show you with both. So you're gonna have a ball, all you need is a ball and your glove, again, if you don't have it, just use your hand. Let's go backhand first. All you're gonna do is get into a good fielding position, you're gonna get your back flat, you're gonna get your hand down on the ground, you're gonna take the ball and you're just gonna drop the ball and you're just gonna pick it, pick it. All right, so once you do that, I wanna work through the ball, I want to get the ball off the ground as quickly as I can. So I'm trying to create a really, really small distance between glove, or in this case, hand and ball. So I'm going to work through it. All I'm doing is working my arm from right here, right with my elbow. So I'm not pushing through like this. I'm literally just extending my elbow through the ball, okay? I do that, I also wanna work on transfer. So I wanna go through it, bring it back and transfer. So we do a bunch of backhands, then we can just flip around and go forehand. So we're gonna drop it and you're just gonna push through it now. So push through it, transfer, push through it, transfer. So same technique, we're gonna to try to get as small of a distance between ball and in this case again, hand. We're gonna work through the ball and then we're gonna bring the ball quickly to the center of our body and transfer. Now you can just throw your glove on and you can go through the exact same routine, okay? After you do that, you can go to the Rucket Rebounder. Now, we like to have our players start down 
on their knees. Again, you can do this with two hands. So you can throw balls at the screen and work on two hands. But because we're talking about one hand today, all we're gonna do is shift our body a little bit. So you can go through the same exact progression. This time, again, we'll take the glove off. We'll go bare hand and then we'll go glove. So all we're gonna do is get into position. Again, always think about having your back as flat as you possibly can. Get your eyes behind your glove. Or again, in this case, hand. You're gonna throw the ball off the rocket screen and you're just gonna work on picking the ball. So again, this is key now because when the ball comes off of the, the rocket rebounder, it's not always gonna come off the same way. So you saw in that last one right there, I had to work through the ball. That ball was gonna bounce out here and I wanna create the shortest hop possible. I want as little a distance between hand and ball. Nothing can go wrong when my hand is that close to the ball. If my hand is back here, well now I've gotta to try to catch that on the mid hop and that becomes difficult. So on that ball that was gonna bounce out there, I work through the ball. If the ball's gonna bounce here, well, I can just get, get it right there. I don't have to extend out. So I'm always trying to catch the short hop or the long hop, the ball that's bouncing and now it's descending and I catch the ball. But I wanna stay away from those middle hops, all right? So again, do that right there, go bare hand. Then you can throw your glove on. Then all you do, you switch your feet around and you go forehand. So forehand this time, I'll just, I'll throw my glove on again, you can do it with no glove. Gonna get in the position, same thing, have your chest over, have your glove out front. Make sure when you have your glove on or even with your bare hand, that it is open to the ball early. Don't be here. A lot of players, they don't even realize it, but they're sitting like this and the glove isn't open. So they're like this and then at the last second, they try to flash their glove open. And if a ball is hit really hard at you in a game and you think you're gonna go from here and then try to quickly flash open, ball's gonna be by you. So immediately, the second I go to throw this ball off the rocket screen, I'm gonna open my glove. So I open. So that's another example right there. That ball was gonna bounce right there. I worked through the ball. I tried to close that gap between ball and glove, but I'm showing the glove to the ball. I talk about having eyes inside your glove and the eyes need to see the ball. All right, so we'll go backhands, we'll go forehands. Now we can stand up. Now once we stand up, we just back up a little bit. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna toss the ball off the screen and I'm gonna work my feet. If the ball comes back really far, well, then I don't have to attack it as much. If the ball doesn't come off very far, then I've got to use my feet again and create that short hop and make that distance really small between glove and ball. So let me show you a couple. So as you flip it, all I'm trying to do is flip it at different heights and different locations because it'll make the ball come off different ways. I want the ball to come off left, I want it to come off right, I want it to come off far, sometimes I don't want it to come off as far, so that I have to work my feet. My feet get me in the position, like I said, trying to always attack that short hop if possible. Now if you do backhands, we'll go over to forehands. So same as I think, I'm just gonna throw the ball off the screen, I'm gonna slide a little bit to the right for me, just so I can get the ball a little bit more on my left side. And we're gonna go one hand. Right there, you could put in 30 minutes. Technically, you can put in less or more. You can do whatever you want. You could get hundreds of reps, hundreds of reps in, in probably five to 10 minutes. If you want thousands of reps, all it means is you gotta take a little bit more time. Right? But it's all there for you to get better. You only need yourself, a ball, and a rebounder. That's it. So hopefully that helps you out. I need to take a break now because I'm exhausted and I only did about five minutes of work right there. But I know this will help you out. Make sure you're not neglecting the one hand plays because you have to be a well-rounded infielder. You can't just be able to feel with two hands. Two hands is great, but you've gotta be able to feel one hands because the game is gonna call for you to use the one hand and when it calls for it, you've gotta be able to do it. So hopefully that helps. Uh, if you wanna check out a, a rocket rebounder, Go down in the description box below. I've got a link down there, give you a discount off of the rebounder so that you can get the practice uh, as well. 
That's all we have. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, give it a thumbs up, all that good stuff. We'll talk to you later.